أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh اللهم اجعل ما نقوله ونفعله خالصا لوجهك الكريم Ich freue mich, heute unter euch zu sein. Tachalas in English. I'm really happy to be among you. Eid uh, Mubarak to you all. Inshallah, may Allah Azza wa Jal accept your deeds. And before I start, in honor to our martyrs, to those who gave their lives on the path of truth all over the world, in all times and ages, especially those who are giving their lives now, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iran, in Afghanistan, and all over the world, we would like to recite Al-Fatiha Masbuqatan bis salati ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The topic that I chose for tonight is about the purpose of life. Because Alhamdulillah, we always start with Alhamdulillah, we finish with Alhamdulillah. Our parents did their best, the best they could do to raise us in the best possible way. Right? And they gave us a bunch of things. They taught us a bunch of things when it comes to having certain adab, right? Take your shoes uh, off before you enter the house. Don't eat too much sweets when somebody's over. Respect the elder. Do this, don't do that. They did what they could. They taught us how to pray, salah, psalm, a few things, right? But when it comes to other things, and they're excused, inshallah, they didn't teach us other things about life, and especially about ourselves, right? Most of us grew up, and they didn't have that figure that came to them and told them, Habibi, my younger brother, my younger sister, my son, my daughter, you are going to face situations in life where you will feel deep sadness you will feel lost. Sometimes you feel betrayed. This is how you choose a friend. This is how you keep a friend, right? This is how you treat yourself. This is how you treat others. Be careful, watch out. This is what's important in life. We just grew up in a way, and then we just went with the crowd, with the majority. We went to school and that's it. We took something from our culture something from our parents, but most of that which we took was from school, from friends, and now from social media. So we live life, but we don't know why we do what we do. We don't know that. If I was to ask you all, why did you go to school? Hala, put aside the fact that the school system is made in a way that it leads you to a university, that it leads you to fit in their economic system, right? For you to serve there. I'm not saying 100% all of it is bad, right? But they made it in a way that from school, you go to uni, you go to work because they have gaps they want to fill and you should fill that gap, right? This job has a high wage, let's do that. 
which, which makes me the biggest amount of money, let me go do that. Okay? So let's put that aside. Why do you go to school? You go to school to learn, to study, to gain knowledge. Let's also put aside the fact that how important is that knowledge that we take from school, from a humanitarian aspect, right? Does it make you a human or no? Because you learn a few things, they're good, alhamdulillah, but does that make you a human? When we look at some presidents, some rulers now, with one button, with one click, he kills thousands of people. And it's like, khalas, he's dressed nice, he has a suit, he has no beard, he looks clean, right? He, he eats properly, fork and spoon and stuff like that. MashaAllah, right? But no human values. He's, like my teacher says, these people are just beautifully dressed animals. That's it. Type. Let's put that aside as well. You go to school, you study, you learn. Why? Because you want to go to university or you want to open your business or just because you have to go. Type. Then you go to university, you go to school, you gain knowledge, you're done. Type. Why do you do that? Because you want to have a job. Type. Why do you want to have a job? What's the goal? Because I want to make money. Type. Why do you want to make money? For what? Because I want to get married. I want to live. I want to eat. I want to drink. Type, you made money, you got married. Alf Mabruk. You have kids. Type. And then what? You have your house, you have your family, you have your kids, you have your children. And then what? You did all of that. Some will tell you, you know, I want to see my grandchildren. Type, you saw them. And then what? What's after that? You see them get married, and then what? What's next? What's your purpose? What's your goal? What's the final destination? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's next? Nothing. Because we spend 20, 25, 30 years of our main life just following that goal, and then you reach that goal at 50, maybe earlier. But you reach that goal, and then you're like, all right, and then what? You feel a void inside. You reach the goal that you were striving for, that everyone told you that you should reach. And then what? What do you do next? You don't know. You just spend your life in a way until you die and pass away. But the question is, is that really why Allah created us? Because we believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. We believe that He created us. We believe that He put us into this world. Is that why we live? To eat, drink, and worship, and salah, shwayyat som, and shahar Ramadan, and that's it? What's the goal? Yani if all of us on earth just spent our life in this way, eat, drink, sleep, make money, work, come back home, and that's it. Imagine, this is, this is all we do, Right? This is Abath. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you really think this is why we created you? To eat, sleep, drink? That's it. Can man put aside that we live in a very unjust economic situation right now where you have to work two, month, two weeks or two and a half weeks just to pay off your rent? When al-adl, Right? You have to work three, four, five hours to get a haircut. No offense to any baba, but it's expensive, right? Especially in Australia. Everyone's looking back. Who's the baba? Raise your hand. It's okay. Maybe Esther. So it's all unjust, but we spend our life basically just doing things, but we don't know why. There's a quote that says, do you know who you were before the world told you who you should be? Because we grew up, everyone is telling us, be in this way, live in this way, buy this, do this. This is what you should do. This is your goal. This is where you have to go. This is the place that you have to reach. This makes you successful. And if you don't reach that, you're no good. Okay? But is that why we're living? Imagine you reach that goal, that big goal. You will not find anything after that. It's like you on a smaller scale when you want a phone so bad or a car so bad 
and you work for it, you wish you, ha you can have it, or a woman or a man that you want to marry, and then once you have it, you're happy for a week, for two. And then you're like, oh, that's it, yalla, next. Type. So the question is, the main question is, why do we do what we do? Aslan, what's our goal? What's our purpose? Who am I? Not the Jackie Chan movie, who am I? The older generation knows. But who am I? Because in most cases, we don't understand ourselves. We don't understand ourselves. I'm sure you saw these memes when you go to the fridge and you're like, am I hungry or am I bored? You don't know the tafsir of your own feeling. And then we expect others to understand us without us saying anything, especially women. Like, Shubak, you have to understand, you have to read my mind. Right? But in so many cases, we do not even understand ourselves, yet we expect everyone else to understand us, to find an excuse for us, to know how to treat us. But we don't understand ourselves. So these are essential questions. Why am I living? What's my goal? What do I want? Because you don't want to end up at 50, depressed, sitting at home, not knowing why you lived. Or you want to reach the age of 60 or 65 and be like, what did I do my whole life? Right? You don't want to reach that. So why do we do what we do? This is the question I want to speak about today. This is the question I want to give you an answer to. Why do we do what we do? Every single day, we make multiple decisions. The second we wake up, we take a decision, should I wear this hoodie or this hoodie? Should I have this for breakfast or that for breakfast? Should I go into this major or that major? Should I marry this woman or this woman? This man or this man? This car or that car? That restaurant or that restaurant? This place or that place? Every single day, multiple choices that we make. But why are we choosing what we choose? Why is that like that? What are we looking for? Because my claim is that we are looking for something. We are all looking for something. And based on that, we choose what we choose. And we do what we do. We never question it. Because it's a fast process. Every single day, we wake up, we just do what we do. And then that's it. And then sometimes you have days where you feel sadness. Other days you're happy. One day your life makes sense. Another day your life doesn't make sense. Right? Nothing works out, then everything works out. It's weird. Like, but why do we do what we do? The answer, the response is, because usually when I'm having a discussion, I just say that question and I leave. And then I expect to return after a few months and then people give me an answer, but they forget the question. So no one really is bothered to think about it. So but I'm going to give you the, the answer now. What we are looking for is perfection is al-kamal in Arabic, perfection. In every single deed that you do, in every single action that you do, you are looking for kamal and perfection. Everything, okay? Even the Aussie that is drinking alcohol or eating pork, he only does that because he sees perfection in that. He sees that this is good. And this is why he does it. You do what you do because you see perfection in the adid. Put aside, in, is, it correct, is it right or wrong? You just see perfection and this is why you do what you do. But if you didn't see perfection in the adid, you wouldn't do it. You would not even think about doing it. If I bring you a plate of rotten food, you don't see perfection in that at all. You wouldn't even think of eating that plate. It doesn't even cross your mind. You would look at it, shuha, take it away. Right? And this could help us to understand the imams a bit, a bit better when it comes to sinning and sins. They see every sin just like how you see rotten food. The imam doesn't even think about committing a sin because he sees no perfection at all in committing a sin. Right? If you are a healthy, stable human being, you would not even think about going on the street naked and walking in front of people. If you're healthy, this is why I said healthy, stable human being, right? You wouldn't even think about that. Same thing, the imam, 
he doesn't even think about committing a sin. Because to him, it's like rotten food. So he doesn't even think about that. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So once you see kamal in something, once you recognize perfection in something, you work towards it. With no effort, with no push, with no motivation, with no one being on your head, on your case, and pushing you. Once you recognize perfection in something, you're going to do it regardless. Okay? You have all the energy. And this solves a problem when it comes to willpower. People come sometimes and say, I'm too weak. I have no discipline. I cannot commit. Halla, if you follow me till the end, you will see that you can follow what you want to follow. You can have the needed discipline. And there's no problem with willpower. It's a problem of your mindset. It's a problem of how you see things. It's a problem of your perception. Once you solve that, you have all the power, all the energy in the world. The clearest example is you falling in love. When you fall in love, you see your beloved as the most perfect thing ever. And suddenly, you have all the power. You're, you don't sleep at night. Aslan, you just wake up randomly at night. Even if you're a heavy sleeper, you're like, my heart told me I should wake up. Let me check my phone. Subhanallah, you sent me a message. If my heart told me. This is how we are. right? All day, you keep thinking about your beloved. In anything that you see, in anything that you do, right? If your beloved tells you, I'm drinking water, Habib, tishway, tishway, I don't want you to die, you know, I'm ahlik. It's on your mind the whole time, right? You think about that person the whole time. You have the energy, you don't want to sleep. If they need something, you would go out of your way to, to help them out, right? Because you're in love. No effort. No one is pushing you. No one is telling you, yalla, go love her, go love him. Think about him, think about her. It's on your mind, but why? Because you saw perfection in that. And khalas, it doesn't leave you. It hunts you and you're happy to be hunted by that. Right? So, same thing when somebody's obsessed with football, with cars, with anything. It's on your mind and you love it. You have your phone case, your phone cover, your wallpaper, your car, your bed sheets. Everything is surrounded or revolves around that. Because you're in love. Because you see perfection in that. After you get married and engaged, it, gets, it decreases. You're like, خلاص, oh, it's all right. No problem, right? Awal she, you have like a 10-hour phone call and then it's like, send me a message. I'm, not, I'm busy. I can't respond to you. Because that decreases. Because it's not the real perfection. It's not the real perfection. But once you recognize perfection in something, this is what I want to say, you have the power, you have the strength, you have the ability, you have everything that it takes and needs for you to do what, whatever you have to do. Because you saw perfection in something. Even if you're sitting on your phone all day, even if you're sleeping all day, you're only doing that because you see perfection in that. In that moment, this is more perfect than going to work. In this moment, this is more perfect than doing anything else. This is why you're doing it. If you really saw that this is no, there's no perfection in this deed, you wouldn't do it. But you only do it because you see perfection in that. And this is why you do it. This is why you're, you're on your phone the whole day. You're feeling miserable, right? I said in the beginning, put aside the fact that is it right or wrong? You just see perfection in that and this is why you do it. I said the Australians, they drink alcohol, right? Because they see perfection. It's wrong, but they see perfection in that. And they're going to drink alcohol. As long as they see perfection in that deed, they're going to do it. Okay? So same thing when it comes to us. Type. So the main point till now is once you recognize perfection in something, you're going to do it regardless. And no one can stop you. But the real, unlimited, absolute perfection is who? Hassan. Middle of Sunni brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jal. He's the only real, unlimited, and absolute perfection. Everything else is a limited perfection, if it is a perfection. Everything else is a limited perfection. And here, our scholars say, some of them, some of our arafa, they say the following, that we are all looking for perfection, 
And the only real unlimited perfection is Allah Azza wa Jal. So, all of us, in every action that we do, we are looking for Allah Azza wa Jal. We are worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. Whoever it is, every single individual on earth, with every action they're taking, with every action they're doing, they are worshipping Allah. Even though they don't know it. They don't know what they want. But in reality, they are all looking for Allah Azza wa Jal. So everyone basically is worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. In an indirect way. Yes, not on a shara'i perspective. Shara'an, no. We're saying taqweenan. What they have inside, their fitrah is built to seek perfection. Because this is what they want and they're just lost. And when you walk out here tomorrow, go to the mall, look at everyone. They are all looking for something that makes them feel ease, rest, calm. And that is Allah Azza wa Jal, but they're lost left and right. So the messengers, the prophets all came to show us and to tell us, look, Allah Azza wa Jal, he's the ultimate perfection. He is the real perfection. He is the only perfection. This is why also some of our scholars say that in the Quran, you don't really find many proofs to Allah's existence. You just find many verses that describe Allah. Right? أَأَنْتُمْ تُنْزِلُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنَ Etc. All these verses that describe Allah and His power because this is all you need. This is all you need. You don't need a proof to love somebody else. You just feel it. And once you recognize Allah and you see Him and you know who He is and what He did, you will fall in love. And once you fall in love, perfection, you reached your goal. This is your final destination. Allah Azrael is unlimited. So you only need this connection, this bond. And once you have this bond and this connection, خلص, that's it. This is your wusul lal mahboob. And this is why there's not many proofs. It's more descriptions of Allah Azza wa and what He does and His attributes. Because this is all you need. Just to have a right mindset, to look, look, you have everything that you want, just go on the right track. Be on the right track. Be on the right path towards Allah Azza wa so the scholars came to the verse that says, وَقَدَى رَبُّكُمْ وَقَدَى رَبُّكُمْ Let me just look it up. هلا, I have it. وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ Shaid Mutahari says that some Urafa have a tafsir for this verse, a different tafsir. Because when he says, your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him. Qada ilahi. That you worship none but him. He says we have two types of qada. Two types. We have al-qada al-tashri'i and we have al-qada al-takwini. Qada al-tashri'i is basically like salah, like psalm, like hajj. It's where Allah Azza wa Jal is asking you to do something and then you have the choice, you have the ability to do it or not do it. Right? You can pray, you cannot pray. But Allah asked you, He has decreed that you worship Him but tashri'an, not taqweenan. So you have the ability to follow the command or not to follow the command. This is qada tashri'i. And then we have qada taqweeni. Qada taqweeni is like Allah Azza wa Jal, Him being the creator and you being the creation. He didn't ask you to be the creation. You are his creation. Taqweenan, you are his creation. It is like that. And he is the creator. Okay, you have no choice. So, he says that some Arafa, when it comes to this verse, they say, وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا That means, الْقَضَاءِ التَّكْوِينِ He wants that tashri'an. On the qada tashri'i level, he wants you to worship none but him. All your ibadat, all your actions should belong to him. But in addition to that, they say, tafsir batin to it is also al qada al-takwini, which is what I was trying to explain and say, the perfection. Like your fitra was decreed in a way, there's a qada, you are built in a way that you look for perfection and nothing else, and Allah Azza wa Jalla, He's the only real unlimited perfection, so you are decreed to worship Him in everything that you do. Okay? This is what they say. 
So, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Even on the taqweeni level, you are meant to worship him in every action that you do, in everything that you do. And this is why we have the other verse that says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Like the real rest you will find only when you reach Allah Azza wa Jal. Because everything else in dunya, everything else that you do is limited. And once you reach that perfection that you think will satisfy you, it won't satisfy you, alaykum salam. It won't satisfy you and you will go and look for something else. And this is the reality of our life today. Right? We jump from application to application, from game to game, from movie to movie, from series to series, right? From junk food to another junk food. I don't know, Halla Asarfi, billion flavors, right? Every possible thing, they're making it into food. Type, we keep going from one thing to the other. And trust me, so many people just spend their life distracting themselves until they die. That's it. I'm bored, let me fill it up with something. Yalla, movie, movie. Series, series. Game, game. That's it. Then he spends all his life in this matter, in this way. And he has no time to do anything. It's not a problem of time. We all have time. It's just our priorities are different. Now you want to follow up with a hundred things on your phone. A kid, you won't have time to, to go help anyone or to think even. We don't have time to think because we're distracted. Jumping from one thing to the other. From one thing to the other in hope that we find eternal happiness and absolute happiness. Right? But you won't find that. You can play games for 20 years, you will reach a point where you've had enough. You can do whatever you want in this dunya, you will reach a point where you have had enough. You can go eat at the most fancy restaurants, after a while you're like, that's it. It's good to do it once, every once in a while, do it. Travel the world, but even if you did, you're going to have enough. Because it's the limited perfections that you're going to. right? And you're not going to feel at ease and rest deep inside. Because you're going to the wrong thing. You are created for something bigger. And you go to the limited things and they will not satisfy you. Only Allah Azza wa Jal has the ability to satisfy you. Once you reach Allah Azza wa Jal, you'll be fully satisfied and fully happy. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. في شيء طيب صلوا على محمد وآل محمد جيد جيد خير إن شاء الله طيب alright so basically if we want to continue we'd say that once we show people that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the real unlimited perfection, they're good to go. It's like that toy, if you remember it, that you could spin its back and then it, it keeps walking. You're walking regardless. You don't need motivation. It's not an issue of willpower. It's just somebody needs to put you on the right track. So once we tell people and tell ourselves that, listen, this dunya, you have to live in it. You can enjoy it. You can go out. You can do whatever you want. But just be aware of the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the only real unlimited perfection. That's it. This is basically it. It's, it's a matter of your intention. To know that Allah is the real deal, then you will feel at, at ease. But if you think that this will give you happiness, it won't give you happiness and this won't last. Taib. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal, when He speaks about the Jannah, when He speaks about paradise, He says the following: "Inna al-ladina amanu wa amilu al-salihat kanat lahum jannat al-firdausi nuzula khalidina fiha la yabghuna anha hiwala la yabghuna anha hiwala." I will read the verse in English. He says, "Verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds." shall have the garden of Al-Firdaus for their entertainment. Therein they will abide and never will they desire any change therefrom. خلص. Jannat Al-Firdaus, once you reach that, you don't want anything else. 
you will find rest and ease. But why? Because it is a perfection that is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. Unlimited. And this is why Jannah needs to be unlimited. Because people ask, like, aren't we going to get bored in Jannah? What are we going to do there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands and millions of years? But that's the thing. Because it's unlimited, you will never get bored. You only get bored of things that are limited. When they're limited and when you reach them and when you have them, you're like, Khalas, let me go to the next thing. Jannah is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. It is from His perfection, so this is why you will never get bored in Jannah. Because it's, it's connected to His unlimited perfection. طيب. And there's a narration, probably weak, probably in the Sunni sources, but anyway, the, the meaning that the narration says benefits us in, in, this, in this stage. The narration says that Jibreel alayhi salam was once between the heaven and the sky and he was looking down on earth and he was looking at people and he started laughing. Okay, And then the Prophet asked him, why are you laughing? What is it that is making you laugh? And then he said, according to that narration, like I said, keep in mind, it's probably a weak narration, but I just want the meaning of it. He said, because the people are looking for something but it doesn't exist in dunya. So the Prophet told him, what is it? And the response is not Kamal, by the way, because everyone has Kamal in his mind. No, but the, pro the response was Arraha, comfort. Comfort does not exist. Yet everyone is looking for comfort. Everyone is looking for that. Everyone wants to reach that. But it doesn't exist in dunya. طيب. Now, that we said that Allah Azza wa is the ultimate perfection. How can we reach Allah Azza wa How can we know that? How can we know what is connected to Him? What is from His perfection? And what's not? The only way is Him telling us Allah Azza wa And this is why we need messengers. This is why we need the prophecy. And this is why Allah Azza wa sent down His, his prophets. Right? Because without him telling us what's connected to him, what's the real perfection, we won't know. So he sent his messengers with a message, and this is what we call religion. And that's it. This is the philosophy of it. For Allah to tell you, look, I created this world. I created you, your emotions, your feelings. I gave you everything. I set up the world in a way, and I want to guide you. I want to show you what's good and what's bad. What I created for you and what I created not for you in a way that you are not allowed to do, or eat, or drink, or have. So this is why he sent us religion. This is how we should see religion, as a guide to life. Our problem is, when it comes to Islam, we see religion as just some do's and don'ts, ibadat, just salah saum, and that's it. And if somebody is praying and fasting, doesn't listen to music, mashallah, sir, he's almost a prophet. That's it. Sister, same thing. She prays and fasts, she has hijab, etc. It's like, mashallah, she's very pious. Okay? If her brother prays salat al layl too, he's like, khalas, I'm, I'm there. Jibreel, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. When are you coming down? And he comes to the mosque, but he might not say it, but he might think, you know, look, I pray salat al layl, I, I, like, I, I, pray, I pray, I don't skip my prayer, my five daily prayers, I fast, I'm good. But this is just the ABC of religion. This is just the first steps into Islam. This is not Islam. Islam is way bigger than that. Islam wants something else from you. Islam wants you to pray and fast. These are Amud al-Din. In Qubilat al-Salat, Qubilat masiwaha We're not belittling al-Salat and these actions. But Islam is not only about ibadat and worship. Islam is your guide to life. If you open our books, our narration books, you will find so many things about friendship, about brotherhood, about being real, about being honest, about how to treat others and yourself, how to treat nature, what to plant, what not to plant, how to eat, what to eat, when to eat. We have everything in Islam, but we don't open, we don't read, we don't want to. We see religion as just, Yalla, Salah, Usam, Ushway, Shaykh, and lecture, and that's it. But this is not Islam. We're lost. We're experimenting left and right. Let me see what's good. Let me see what's bad. And that's it. Ma'anu Allah gave us everything. He gave us the guide to life. And this is why I always say, 
Islam is a lifestyle. It is your lifestyle, how you should be, how you should walk, how you should treat others and yourself. This is what Islam is. This is why Islam came. We have narrations. Why else would narrations speak about how to eat grapes? Imam al-Baqir in narration, he tells you how to eat grapes. Shukhas, let me just pray and fast. Why would the Imam tell me how to eat grapes? Why would the Imam tell me how much I should chew my food? How would the, why would the Imam tell me how to sleep? How to wake up? How to enter the bathroom? Why? If it's all salah and psalm, why would the Imam tell me what to wear, what color, what to eat? To put perfume, why? Because Islam wants you to live an Islamic lifestyle. It's bigger than that. All these questions, why am I living? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? Who am I? All these questions, your identity, who you are, Islam told you who you should be, what you should do, and everything. And this is the real beauty of Islam. The thing is, we see as Islam is part of my life. Right? Like, my name is Muhammad al-Shayar. I like horses, I like to swim, I like mluhiya, and I like... Islam and religion. This is, it. this is how we see it. It's like, oh, I'm religious, yeah, I do pray. But the, the reality is that no, this whole life, this whole world, this whole universe is part of your Islamic worldview. Mish Islam is part of your life. You and your life and your family and your parents and this whole universe is part of your Islamic worldview. It's a station. Islam is not a hobby on the side. Well, it's good. You know, like I was religious, now I'm not. Maybe later on I will be again. La, you understood it wrong, Habibi. Mishayi, it's on off, yani. Well, I was into soccer, now I'm not. Maybe later on I'll play again. La, it's not something that comes and goes. If you really believe in Allah, if you really believe in Islam, if you really want to follow this religion, take it as it is, as a complete, as a whole thing. Take Islam and let Islam show you how to live life instead of you trying to figure out what's, what's right and what's wrong. Yani, should I be vegetarian? Wallala, I don't know. Maybe these animals have rights to live. You know, They have kids. They have their, their souls as well. So who gave me the right to eat them? Let me just be vegetarian. Right? Type. You don't know. You just do what you think is maybe right. What you see first on social media or what you're first taught in school, this is what you think is right. Now you see what's going on in the world and everything and Kilshi. Now kids are being taught other things. Maybe they think, well, this is right. We don't know. They're going to grow up. But Islam told you what's right. Islam told you what's wrong in every aspect of life. Not only when it comes to salah and so on. Right? Somebody said something funny one day. He said that, you know, no, we need the sheikh, like even outside of the masjid, etc. He's like, when I want to build a house, I need to call the sheikh to ask him in which direction is the qibla so that I don't build the toilet towards the qibla. Because you know, it's haram to go to the bathroom when the toilet is directed towards the qibla. He's like, mashallah, anjad, what a benefit. Yani, you need the sheikh to do that, right? La, we have narrations that speak about your house, how your house should be. Ad-dar al-wasi'ah, big house with etc with a few things we have these narrations right just open them look into them and let islam guide you to live an islamic lifestyle but the problem is that when it comes to anything in life we try to study it properly from a to z right if you want to go to ikea to buy a closet you're like all right let me open the guide step one is unbox that uh, that thing put it in the corner and then get that uh, uh, bolt or screw and then put it in this way and then you follow step by step everything until the closet is done you're like good but when it comes to Islam it's like ah, oh, who cares let me just listen to a lecture here let me just read this book here this information here let me just ask anyone let me just listen to anyone and khalas, this is how I built my Islamic worldview Habibi you didn't build an Islamic worldview you don't understand Islam because you're taking information left and right it's like somebody drawing a cartoon like an eye is that big, another eye is small. It's not in proportion. It doesn't make sense. This is why many people come and have questions. They're like, but Sheikh, this doesn't make sense. Why is Islam like that? Like, I don't think, I'm not convinced. Like, no, this part doesn't make sense. Right? This is against my logic, against my brain. Eh, Habibi, right. Because you didn't understand Islam properly. You didn't study Islam properly from A to Z. But everything else you do, you want to follow instructions. But when it comes to Islam, to start properly. Tawheed, Adil, Nubuwa, Imama, Ma'ad. Start to understand Islam properly. Trust me, then it will make sense. But no, we decide not to do so. So we take information left and right. And then we have wrong understanding. 
And I don't blame anyone. Because sometimes there's wrong facts. Sometimes there's wrong facts. People come and say, pork is haram. This is what I used to hear back in the day. Why? Because it has some bacteria in it. And that bacteria is harmful to you. Yachayi, where did you get that from? Is there a narration? Is there a verse? Wallah, you just came up with that. You think it's nice? So let me just say that. Who told you this? Yani, halla, if medicine is able, technology, kilshi, if they're able to remove all kinds of bacteria from pork, yani, does it become halal? Yani, you know the real alla for the hukum? You know the real cause for the hukum? La, it doesn't become halal. Who told you that pork is haram because of certain bacteria? Right? And same thing when it comes to other ahkam. Wallah, this is halal because of this and that. Who told you this? Do you have evidence? If you don't, just go ask, but don't give wrong information and wrong facts. One last thing, and I'll finish off, inshallah, is sometimes we have, wrong, we have right facts, correct facts, but a wrong understanding. Okay? If you're introducing Islam to somebody, you can tell him, I wouldn't advise. You can tell him, you know what? In Islam, yeah, there is hellfire. With Jahannam and your skin. Right? Hellfire and azab and those who don't wear hijab, this is going to happen. And there and the angels are going to drag you and they're going to do... It's right. It's all correct. But even a non-Muslim or a Muslim, they might come and say, but Sheikh, how does that like, align with Allah's unlimited mercy? Allah Azza wa Jal wasi'at rahmatuhu kulla shay. Allah Azza wa Jal huwa rahman huwa rahim So how does that work? Allah Azza wa Jal with his unlimited mercy, with his rahma, And then at the same time, we have hellfire and nar and azab and jahannam wa ashad al-azab. So how does that work? These are correct facts. It's true. Right? But the problem is that we look at it from a, from a wrong angle. We're taking things out of context. And when we take them out of context, it doesn't make sense. We need to put things into place and then they will make sense. Hala, I think, I'm not going to mention Jahannam anymore. Maybe he's scared now. But I didn't mean to, Yani. It's like, inshallah, Jannah, Jannah, Imam Ali, Rahmi, Imam Hassan, Nahar min Asal, Sakat, Mishal Hal. Um, we, we look at it from a wrong perspective. We have a wrong understanding. We think it contradicts. So many people enter Jannah because of hellfire. Because the Imam says in the narration that people are of three kinds. There are people who worship Allah because they are afraid of his hellfire. Right? He says, this is the worship of the servants. They worship Allah because they are afraid of hellfire. So they enter Jannah because of hellfire. And there are those who worship Allah Azza wa Jal because tama'an fi jannatihi. They want to enter paradise. And the Imam describes this as ibadat al-tujjar. Right? At-tajir. And then he says, and there are some people who worship Allah Azza wa Jal not for this and not for that. They worship Allah Azza wa Jal because he is worthy of being worshipped. And this is ibadat al-ahrar. The worship of the free. Right? So, so many people enter jannah because they're afraid of hellfire. And not only that, hellfire, if you look at it, it makes sense in the bigger picture. It's beautiful in the bigger picture. Imagine somebody came to you, showed you a picture, a screen, and it's all black, and he told you, look at this beautiful painting. You're going to be confused. You're going to tell him, but where's the beauty? The only thing I see is black. And you tell him, oh, wait, wait, let, let me zoom out. You zoom out, and then it's a big painting, Right? And that black that you saw is just the shadow. And a painting with a shadow usually is nicer than a painting without a shadow. So in the bigger picture, it makes sense. In the bigger picture, it's beautiful. In the bigger picture, it's understandable. It's relatable. But if there's no bigger picture, it doesn't make sense. If you just zoom into hellfire and be like, this is ugly. Yes, it is ugly. But look at it from the bigger perspective. It's beautiful. It's necessary. It's needed. Because this is how we are as human beings. Some of us, بيمشو reward. تعا حبيبي, I'll give you this. Others, بالشحاطة. تعالى هون. You either do this, أو بتكلا أتلي. Right? So in the bigger picture, it's needed. It's good. 
So, in conclusion, to summarize everything, to end everything, and then we can go into the Q&A, inshallah, is basically, we need to know who we are, what we want, because our time is limited. We don't want to wake up later on and be like, I wasted my time and I wasted my life, right? We are all looking for something that is the unlimited perfection, which is only Allah Azza wa Jal. Do everything else. No one understand me that, khalas, I should leave this dunya aside and not do anything anymore. Do it. Just be aware that this is a limited perfection. This is what I want to tell you. This is limited. This will not satisfy you. Don't ever question yourself, why am I not happy? Because you went to the limited perfection, not to the unlimited perfection. And you will not find happiness. You will be distracted for a bit and that's it. Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the unlimited perfection. Allah Azza wa Jal is your qibla, your direction that you really want and that everyone else basically wants. And this is why we should be proud to be Muslimin. Sometimes we have that, that, that complex in Wallah, we're less, we're Muslimin, we're, we're not good, others are better, we're ashamed. La, we have the real thing. We have Allah Azza wa Jal, we have everything. If you really believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. طيب. So he sent his messengers to tell us what's good, what's bad, what's the perfection and what's good for you to live a good life here and to live a good life there. There's verses that speak about this, but Salah, we don't have time. Ask me this in the Q&A and I'll respond to you. طيب. So Allah sent us this and this is the religion. And religion is not only Salah and Sawm and Ibadat. Religion is your lifestyle that we need to understand properly from A to Z. From A bis Z in German. Z is Z in German, okay? So this is what we need to understand. This is what I wanted to share with you. And give you tonight, Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.